While Jackson kicks some boxes in his garage out of the way. Like a Christmas tree, maybe? Um, Welcome to the greatest, most amazing podcast in the universe, probably. And I'm your host, Fraser LeVay. We're with Jackson Greaves, Biscuits and Greavy. We're talking the best things to do in Costa Rica, 10 must-do things. We'll add places to go, an itinerary, places to see in uh, San Jose, Manuel Antonio, La Fortuna, Tamarindo. I can't speak Spanish very well, so apologize for how I pronounce those. You're a leader. Yes, and before we get to Costa Rica and the best things to do, I just want to address... Um, a couple things, highs and lows, right? We've it's our fourth podcast now. Highs and lows. Uh, we'll try not to friend three countries this time, Jackson. So I mean, we've got some apologies, maybe at some point for Thailand, Malaysia, and India. Um, thankfully, we're too small to get canceled, so that's a good thing. Uh, also, sending me Andrew Tate videos for like places we should talk about. Maybe he's not Mendoza line for for travel. Andrew Tate, uh, but the positives because I don't like to dwell on negatives. Not in order. Nor do you. Uh, as you know, we made fun of Jackson for just doing shout outs in episode one for 17 straight minutes, just shouting out. It turns out the first shout out he did in seven seconds into our first podcast gave us a re shout out back. And they're like, who knows? Maybe they're going to sponsor the show. We're pitching them sp- sponsorships. Shout out uh, Toddy's Vodka. So yeah, now Jackson thinks we're fucking famous. He's going to be shouting out like, Birkenstocks, Bass Pro, Pert Plus, I don't know. but So we, we apologize for making fun of the shout-outs because apparently the shout-outs work. Finolio Boots. If I can get some Finolio Boots. <laughs> Big fan. I travel a lot in them. Go to a lot of restaurants. Look at the craftsmanship. Finolio Boots. Did you not take them off because you want to return them, or why is there a tag on I like to collect boots. Some people collect Jordans. I collect boots. That's how and I do so it. So it's like a thing to keep tags on? Well, I can. I can yeah. take it off right now. It, it, it's way past. I can't return these. Yeah. I guess people like Wait. it was a fashion to put on like those, uh, on the hats you keep like the new era sticker on. So it's Lids. the same thing. Yes, yes. Yeah, Liz. Uh, well, let's get into it. You've been to thousands. They were crazy. Yeah. You've been to Costa Rica. You loved it. Loved it. Loved yeah. it. Specific things about Costa Rica, though. We'll mm-hmm. get into it. But I'm a big fan. Big fan. Always looking at a chance to hop a flight and travel the short ways it takes to get there. Yeah. And the thing about Costa Rica, it's, uh, to paraphrase, it's the birthplace of ecotourism. So that's just incredible. I know when I was there again recently, they just talked about how they put in millions of dollars into like re, re doing the forest. What's the word I'm looking for? Reforestation. Oh, so but, yeah. Before they like cut down tons of uh, trees and all that kind of stuff. But years and years ago, the government was like, no, screw that. We need to like put all the, you know, everything back in to how it was. And that's why it's such like an eco tourist place. That's why there's so many animals compared to all the other countries. Oh, they were um, for all the zip lines. I, I did a lot of zip lining while I was down there. Lots yeah. Adventure tourism. Huge for adventure tourism. Mm-hmm. I would say it's the best place to go in like the Americas. That's easy to get to from the US, Canada sort of thing. Because it's got everything you want. It reminds me a lot of Asia, but um, easier to get to than Asia. And it's funner to say Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yeah. Costa Rica. It's a, it's a, it's fantastic. It's like, it's like Mufasa. Yeah, but but even more fun to say. Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, what was your favorite thing to do in Costa Rica? I love it. It looks great. Fit, to be honest. Fishing because it goes in hand in hand with my other favorite thing to do. Which is eat and yeah. cook. But uh, I would say I, when I went, I stayed at the uh, town of Sueños. Los Sueños. And uh, it's on the Pacific side. And uh, from there, we went fishing almost every day. We just couldn't stop hitting fish. Good, mm. Couldn't stop ripping lips. And uh, I got caught quite into a lot of sailfish while I was there. They were running. 
we uh, had an eight in one day. I will remember that uh, wow. day we brought a tear to my eye. I was with my father and my younger sister, and uh, we just slayed them. We slayed them. But there was also quite a bit of other fish. You know, we put back all the sails, of course, but some mahi and stuff like that we kept and uh, we filleted and cooked. And, and you can do so much with the uh, the fish, the type of fish that are down in Costa Rica. I mean, there's, there's countless numbers of uh, fish that are, it's not bad to, uh, what am I trying to say? It's not bad for the environment taken out. They procreate quite frequently. It's not a... Yeah invasive or uh it's not a bad fish to eat. they don't have bad fish to eat it's great yeah and uh you can do fishing from everywhere too i know i loved um manuel antonio i think the best places to go in costa rica are manuel antonio is a must visit and la fortuna so if you only have 10 days seven 10 days you have to go to those two places they're like the number one spots did you go fishing in yako or where were you I would Los Sueños just there's a huge marina out of there that they ship all the charters out of. It's, Where's Los Sueños? Like uh, that some, area? Yeah, let me show you on a map. You know, you show it. Big, um, a big map guy, you know. So if you're going to Costa Rica, uh, you should go unless you just have a short trip. Like if you only do four days, that's a tough one because you have to fly into San Jose and then it's hours to get to either Manuel Antonio Yakko, which I say go to Manuel Antonio a million times over, um, or La Fortuna, um, the Reno Volcano place. So try and go for 10 days so you can see all it has to offer. Manuel Antonio is incredible as a national park. It has waterfalls. Uh, the national park is like the densest. Let me see what it is. It's the most dense area for animals in a giant, I don't want to say the world or North America, but something like that. Mm. Wow. How do you yeah. get, who, how do you get into that? How do you well, jump into it? Do you, you can't just it, dip toe into that type of, uh, it was, it's kind of cool. Cause it's, it's almost like central park. I have no idea the size differences. I think it's, but oh. it's, uh, you can just go and there's guides there. I use paddle nine was a great guide and, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Manuel Antonio is one of the most biodiverse areas in the Americas for you to see animals in the wild. So it's unreal. Like I saw monkeys, sloths, bats, a uh, pit or not a pit viper, a fur de lance, which is the most dangerous venomous snake in Costa Rica and in the one of the Americas. It's incredible. We saw that. Um, you know, lizards. But right, they, 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 you intentionally went to see that pit viper. It wasn't like just in your hotel room or anything like that. Yeah, right? I intentionally, we, I had a guide. The paddle line guide was like able to spot it, which was pretty cool. So, oh, yeah. Wow. Just it was wild. almost like a book, like a children's book that you read with like exotic animals, but you just like went to see it in the wild. <laughs> and then uh, sloths, like I was at the, my hotel. Uh, the I forget, I need to give it a shout out, but. There's a sloth hanging out outside my room. Monkeys on my patio. A monkey actually caught a lizard, bit its head off, and then still played with it. It was on my patio. I was in. They, I, I scared. They're omnivores. The the monkeys are omnivores. I they did scare me. I went zip lining. I don't know if I I mentioned that, but I do. I did a lot of zip lining in Costa Rica as yeah. well. Uh, to and fro, tree to tree, um, going sixty. I mean, you're you're flying down these lines, and uh, what you do is you, 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 one hand is made for the stop it. So when you're ready to stop, you got to really grip on and just kind of slide your way into a man who's there to catch you. And yeah. So they're very safe. They're very safe. You operate almost on the buddy system, you know, because mm. they're zipping line of people. I mean, you look in front of you. If that one guy in front of you is stopped, I mean, you're just gonna. Friend, so just it's good to yell out for your buddy in case you're coming in a little too hot. Yeah. What would you um, say to the buddy? Is there like a word or a term you liked? Look out. I, I'm a yeah. big fan of that one. Look yeah, out. Four, one. four, you know, just because yeah. the, you already know when you hear four, it doesn't matter yeah. if you've never played a day of golf in your life, you know, look out. Look out. Yeah. Keep Heads up. up. Head on a uh, swivel. Like you're playing defense in uh, basketball, my old coach would say uh, head on a swivel. Yes. And you do the guns 
And so the guns, you'd point to the ball and and the player you're you're marking. So Los Sueños, by the way, the place that I visited, located on the west side, west side of Costa Rica, Pacific side, uh, kind of towards. We, I think we call that the. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, kind of towards the middle. I would say mountainous region, hmm. uh, right off the ocean. It's yeah. uh, it's beautiful, but you you do you do go through a quite. It's quite a fun drive. I will say that. I I would if you're you're queasier, you get. Uh, Sick on the roads, I'd bring a bag. Yeah. Bring a bag yeah. Um, you need to go to Manuel Antonio next time. I'll give you some quick things to do on the way there. There's a bridge, uh, the crocodile bridge. I forget the actual name for it, but there's just crocodiles just hanging out under the bridge. There's toucans, you oh. know, flying around. You did the crocodile tour too. I did the crocodile tour. Yeah, they're massive 20 footers, mm -hmm. 20 footers with, with attitude, and you, you have a a man like this is my favorite part is you anytime you get on one of those boats ask them about the turnover rate because because usually it's not much of a turnover but a bunch of people are just dying left and right on these boats because they stick a guy usually with some raw chicken right in the water and just get them to start tapping it on the surface those things get right up on you and <laughs> the best part is they recommend you touch them you can touch a 20-foot alligator I don't know if you're into that, Frazier, but it freaked yeah. me out. I stayed away. But my mother, she got all a pansy with the alligator. Your mom touched, is it a crocodile or an alligator? We don't want to confuse people. Crocodile. I'm sorry. Crocodile. Yeah, we don't want to sound like idiots. Yeah, crocodile. <laughs> These are in Florida, I reckon. Yeah, yeah that's wild. Um, so in... Uh, in Manuel Antonio, yeah, you, on the way there, yeah, there's a little pit stop. You can get like a little cocktail or refreshment, coconut chopped up. You can see parrots or toucans, whatever they're called. Macaws, that's the word I'm looking for. Oh, We're parrot. screwing everything up. Yeah, macaws. Um, and the Crocodile Bridge. And then hiking Niawaka Falls. There's like uh, some gorgeous falls. Paddle 9 will take you. Niawaka Falls, some of the prettiest falls I've ever seen in my life. Um, you can hike up to those. Eco... Chantalis, I think you pronounce it. Waterfalls, lesser known, incredible. And then they have like a a little kitchen at the bottom where you know abuela makes you up a nice little stewed rice chicken concoction. It's incredible. So that's why I loved Mandalo Antonio Park. I told you about. Mm -hmm. It's like you're in National Geographic. It's incredible. Incredible food as well. On the website inspiretraveleat.com. I've got 15 best places to eat in Manuel Antonio. Oh, we talked about the last podcast, a place called a soda. So soda is where you've got grandma, abuela, just whipping up food. And it's like $3 for a plate, fresh fruit, incredible. So I've got all those. Soda Feria is a big one. And soda, what's her name? Marguerite, I want to say. But anyways, there's some good ones. And the river, the Crocodile River is called Rio... Tarcolas. Rio okay. Yeah. Is that the one that has all the healing mud, the healing mud in it? It's got it's some. Not, it's not. That sounds nice. Yeah. Apparently, all these waterfalls Costa Rica have have healing properties. Uh, yeah. I think, I think you just saw my Instagram post a few days ago. <laughs> well, I, I did go to a couple of waterfalls while I was there. By that, four. I didn't do the hiking. I'm not into that. Well, you know, it's vacation. I don't like to move. So yeah. I like to get a four-wheeler, zip and zap, and uh -huh. I get right to, up to those waterfalls courtside. And uh, I, I I was told to just start rubbing myself with mud. Huh. So and, and the next day, you know, I I felt fantastic. Felt fantastic. My No acid reflux, you know. Yeah. I thought my Crohn's for a little bit had been healed, but it, it but it wasn't. And the Crohn's, you still got the Crohn's. Still got the Crohn's. Um, Healing mud of Costa Rica does not help with Crohn's. I will go on the record to say that. That's good. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, but yeah, in Manuel Antonio, you can also uh, do a little bit of surfing, some paddle boarding, some kayaking in the mangroves or out in the ocean. Incredible beach hops. I would say Man Manuel Antonio is arguably the best place in north and central america because it's got the adventure in the waterfalls or it's just got great food drinks and stunning beaches and water where you can just sit while i go do my hikes 
you wait for me like a great husband and you just drink your face off on the beach, do some fishing, and we just meet up in the middle at, you know, some of the nightlife, some of the good restaurants. It's a great place. Oh, La okay. Fortuna. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, that sounds fantastic, Frazier. You're very thoughtful. You're yeah. Very thoughtful. Itineraries. I highly recommend taking a trip with Fraser LeVay. Shout Fraser LeVay for great planning. For that yeah. uh, La Fortuna is uh, a volcano. Are you familiar with it? I did not go to the volcanoes. I hear they're deadly. I have uh, I've heard they kill people, so I just I don't tend to tend to go towards those. But I I think but, that was just the Netflix show you recently watched on the volcano in Hawaii. <laughs> what uh, I watch a lot about volcanoes, and they are unpredictable. I've, I've learned that. You're you're not wrong. Studies. Are... Do my studies, and my teacher in third grade who put baking soda. It, it, I didn't know what to expect, and she truly was right. It was magical. It, but but yeah. but the baking was... soda vinegar. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if that's what they have in Costa Rica to make them so angry, these volcanoes so angry, but they, I hear they do have some active ones. Yeah, but they, uh, that is predictable, I would say, the baking soda vinegar, because you're physically doing it, but semantics. Uh, La Fortuna still, you can hike it. They have the Rio Celeste, which is similar to like Havasupai Falls in Arizona. One of the most gorgeous waterfalls I've ever seen. Costa Rica is just a waterfall heaven. Um, I loved it there. You can zip line. It's called canyoning. Have you ever canyoned? It's like zip lining, but you just go directly down waterfalls and cliff faces. It's like a not- mixture of repelling. It's terrifying. I did. It's our the second or third or fourth most terrifying thing I've ever done. Oh, goodness. What? So, yeah, what- it's, but I would ha- if there was if that was on the options I take I would really have to the other ones would have to really be bad for me to uh, yeah. take on that one you know it's- I'm yeah I would I would need to be on a two week trip and just run out of things to do for me to take up waterfall diving well you know you like rappel down it canyoning what? what yeah it's called Google it. So you, there's a rope and you're just getting doused by water. Yeah. And it's like slippery and like, like at least when you zip line, you kind of go like just down a little bit like that. Yeah. This one is like, you're repelling like an actual mountain climber and, oh. there's, and you just like go down, but you don't touch the wall. You just, you have to like, just kind of let go off the platform and just get waterboarded and God has you. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you just need to be a Catholic and just let God take, take the wheel. You know, I mean, um, or bad. Yeah. Or, yeah. Any, or uh, you can have you whitewater rafted. There's some of the best whitewater rafting in the world in Costa Rica in, in Lord, like the La Fortuna area and many Antonio. I have a friend who says that I have yeah. a friend. I haven't taken him up on the opportunity to go with him because I'm not that coordinated enough to fight the natural waters of Costa Rica or just right. I, I hear they you can just do it. Quarters. They got some stage threes. Yeah, that they they Costa Rica ain't no joke. You know, but they'll take you down like easier ones if need be. I think you'll be fine. I, I'd go down with like a group of people. That way, you know, if anything ever happened to me, you know, it, other people too. Yeah, yeah. well, there'd be a group effort to find everybody. You know. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying it because he's wanting like everyone to die versus just you to die. Because I thought that was self. So like buddy system, big mm. into the buddy system. But yeah, that makes sense. It's, that's how you were thinking. Zip lining and uh, white water rafting buddy system. Uh, in La Fortuna, they also have their Arena Observatory Lodge and waterfall, which was one of the better places I've ever, I've ever seen. There's public hot springs. There's free public hot springs just in the wild. Wow. In La Fortuna, there's also ones you can pay to go into, like resorts. But there's free secret ones I've got on the website. So like in La Fortuna, you can hike waterfall, hike volcanoes, go to hot springs, free hot water, water raft. Yeah. Um, and hike waterfalls. It's unreal. It's one of the best places on earth. If you mm-hmm. love adventure and outdoors, this is the place you have to go. The only thing I don't like about Costa Rica is because it does have so much cool shit is it's probably the most expensive like 
Latin American country. It is the most expensive I've ever been to because it's just everything costs. Like in La Fortuna, it costs to go on to the arena observatory. They're all in. They, they got to bring everything in. Yeah. What, so. What was for Vesa down there? They, 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 it was Ducati and then what else? Ducati's the Hispanic one, but what, um, there was and there's some yeah. amazing beer down there that I was. Oh my gosh. It's uh, yeah. What is it called? Um, I can't think of it, but it is. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, there's also the La Fortuna waterfall, which is another one right in town, and the El Salto rope swing. I know you like this one. Is this a big swimming hole right off the highway, right off the road? And there's a rope swing, giant swimming hole. It's pretty much free, and you just hang out there and bring your own beers. There's the mystical hanging bridges, like. Just hanging bridges in this giant park that you dangle over me like 100 meter drops which is beautiful sights multiple suspension bridges 16 total bridges and all so there's, all, there's a, i don't know if, there's great golfing also about there a lot of great golf resorts all around oh. uh the area um yeah, I just just uh, there's not enough places to swing a club there. I mean, there's too many places to swing a club around there. Too many. Yeah. yeah. Can't hit them all. That's that's fair. They also have if you're into animals, there's sea turtle nesting. Mm -hmm. So that's all over. Uh, I went to Tamarindo as well. The first time I went. Incredible surfing, some of the best surfing um, in that area. Maybe not just in Tamarindo, but there's a lot of bays and areas just outside of Tamarindo. It's kind of a bit dirty, though. It reminds me of, I don't know, if Costa Rica is like Zion National Park, or sorry, Manuel Antonio and La Fortuna is Zion National Park, it would be like Albuquerque. Uh, <laughs> no, Albuquerque's not that dirty. It's just, it's like a big party backpacking place. The beach isn't that nice. It's great for surfing, but that's why I say Manuel Antonio, La Fortuna, the first place you have to go next I would do the Caribbean side. And after that, then I would go to Tamarindo up there. There's like Flamingo Beach and some other gorgeous places to visit. So that's fine. San Jose. Do you, did you spend long in San Jose? It is. It's flew in really, but yeah, it's the worst. I feel bad for saying this, but we have to be honest. I think it's the worst capital city for a nice country in the world. Like it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's not pleasant. There are a couple cool things to do. You have to go kind of go in too. I think what? Don Lewis said that as well. Did he? Yeah, that's Carol Baskin's ex-husband. Just I was, yeah. I was wondering who Don Lewis was. And he's alive now, right? Everyone says it. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. Um, but San Jose, there's a coffee plantation that has a hike, and you, you can drink coffee and have lunch and kind of overlook some of the city. There's a little downtown market, which is really cute. I always love markets. That's one of my favorite things to do whenever I travel is visit markets. Cool. So, what's uh, what was the craziest thing you saw at the Costa Rican market? It, it's always the food. Like you'll see, just like full bullheads skinned, and it's just like their meat mask. Mm. It's, it's a lot like uh, Hannibal Lecter would like it there. It's just a lot of skin things. Mm. Yeah. And everything's just kind of out in the open. Um, yeah. But the food's always great. The best yeah. meal I ever had. Oh, we're going to have one. Of, yeah. This is a fresh meat. Everything's so much more fresh. I love it. Wow. Yeah. Some good candy down there, too. Good chocolates and things like that. Yeah. Chocolate also. Sugar stuff. Yeah, they do have good sugar. Good. Yeah, you get coffee, sugar, you're right. They're chocolate and it's renowned. Um, mm -hmm. Also, if you like to ever want to volunteer, there's a place called Maximo Nivelle, and they actually you can like register to volunteer with them. And whether you want to do like nursing or dentistry or learn English or teach English or childcare activities or whatever that is, there's a, a great place to volunteer in San Jose. But there's also one in Manuel Antonio. Well, but you can have a drive because it is crazy down there. They do not know how to drive. It's, it's unbelievable. Getting down those mountains is just, you, you, Jesus, take the wheel, you know, yeah. you're, you're just, yeah. It's, it's I kind of, I kind of like it. Like I enjoy driving in central and South America because I feel like it makes sense. Like there's no rules, but the rules are common sense. 
where the USA and Canada don't have common sense. So they need like, they just crash into each other or like, so down there it's just, Hey, Our I know I'm going this insurance. That's why we require it. It's, yeah. Yeah. Not down there. I, I don't know how they handle insurance down there, but yeah. yeah. I assume similar, probably less price gouging and as capitalistic, but I don't know. I'm not my, not your cup of tea, not my area of expertise, you know, but that's fine. I've studied it. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, that, sure. Lord, that is that talk about someone we need to get a sponsorship for someone who wants to sponsor travel insurance. We're looking for yeah. someone who wants to get in on the travel insurance trend because boy, is it needed. Boy, is yeah. it needed. Berkshire Hathaway, shout out Berkshire. Is there a second shout out to Berkshire Hathaway? I was about to say, Frazier, come in hot with that. We need you to come in hot with that yeah. recommendation. Excuse me, um, Mr. Buffett, can we please uh, get just, did you ever watch his documentary? So he, he's so cost conscious, his wife will put a dollar amount in his cup, in his car. And in the car he drives is like a Ford Tempo or some like tiny shitty car. And um, his wife will put like 320 in his little cup holder or he'll she'll put like 375 and one is a sausage mcmuffin or egg mcmuffin with a coffee and the other one's a sausage muffin with a hash brown with a coffee and she does it depending on how good the market is because if the market's not good he doesn't deserve and he doesn't want to have that extra hash brown um as part of his day what a bitch <laughs> him or her well he has to do it like he wants her to do that He's like, hey, this is how I can do the dominatrix type thing. So he likes getting punished. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. Well, he's just that cost conscious. Because all those stock market guys are sick. Yeah. Is but he the one they, hey, but Warren, that, that doesn't mean we love the freaks on this podcast. Love the freaks. You so know, he, bring on that travel insurance. Yeah. Go. So if you'd like to travel and if you'd like to sponsor our show, Warren. And I don't think your wife's a bitch, just for the record. Dude, I'd take that back. I'd, I'm i sure Frazier is describing a scenario with a different woman who takes away sausage and egg bit biscuits at will. His first wife. His first. Probably. Yeah, first. Took, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, he asked for it. He's a masochist or a sadist. So he's a, one of the kisses that's to himself. But he does that just because he's so budget conscious. He just wants to reward himself for a good day and for a bad day and the fact that he still eats mcdonald's and is still alive is kind of cool it's disgusting but cool yeah yeah because only are healthy i bet i mean the amount of preserve i always thought about this the amount of preservatives in mcdonald's products doesn't that pat the savings pass on to us doesn't it you know we get some little immortal some of that immortal bread once that gets absorbed by us yeah, I feel I like where you're going. some of our cells should benefit from that. Like just, it's like eating formaldehyde. Like we basically just preserves us. I feel like. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. You know, in a weird way, that absolutely makes sense. I don't like, know. I've yeah. I've you seen those McDonald's burgers that get stuck in a closet for uh, years, and they mm -hmm. just look fresh as can be. Yeah, point. so that should be us. McDonald's has discovered, uh, what's it where you free someone and they come out years later? They've figured that out with their food. I've always wondered they didn't. Sp I, I always thought McDonald's might not love the troops because why aren't they making MREs? I mean, it seems like they're everything on their menu just d can last on a shelf forever. So I don't know why they have been producing MREs for the troops. Yeah, but, what, are, uh, what are MREs? Educate the world and myself. Well, maybe uh, no MREs, uh, emergency meals. Uh, those emergency meals. Oh, uh, okay. You, you, sh you just pop e them. EMSs. Uh, EMSs, yeah, emergency meal substitutes. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Let's yeah. see that. <laughs> well, I'm glad we covered that about Costa Rica. Um, Right. Well, you look at that, and we'll we want to show up. Meal ready, meals ready to eat. Meals ready to eat. Oh, MREs. MREs. Great. Okay. Yeah, you nailed it. So yeah, nailed McDonald's it. should have MREs. You're right. They should. I mean, if they love the troops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. don't love turtles because they still have straws. Meanwhile, the rest of the U.S. has cut them out.
Because that's I, what he's I would say that's false. That's false as well. I went to a Whataburger the other day. It seemed like that was plastic as well. Um, mm -hmm. Went to a Applebee's the other day. The, the chain restaurants just take on those penalties. They just mm -hmm. eat them. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, personally, as a consumer, those plastic straws ruin my meal. I mean, the, the paper straws ruin every meal I've ever had. I've, mm -hmm. They just take, it's all I can think about during the meal. It's like, why did I, am I even trying to drink with this toilet paper roll in my, mm -hmm. in, in my nice mm -hmm. cocktail? I don't mm -hmm. like it. I'm with you. I feel it. I totally yeah, get that. It's looking from a toilet paper roll. I don't like it. No, I completely understand. Well, let's wrap this one up. Next one, we're doing uh, best meals ever. And I think we had something else we wanted to talk about. But we'll figure that out when we knock the next one out. Go ahead. And, and, and until next time, go visit Costa Rica. Pura Vida. Inspire, com. The best podcast in the universe. Probably. Oh, cocktail what's their official cocktail it's oh we should have covered this i'm sure everyone turned it off by a carajillo which i'm just writing a recipe on a yeah, carajillo is a um espresso martini but their version of it with like they you, you can use either <laughs> rum or brandy or liquor 43 spelled is P A R A J I double l o carajillo carajillo is a hot coffee drink ooh, to or which a hard liqueur is added. It is typical of many several Latin American countries, such as Costa Rica mm -hmm. and Spain. And yeah. Spain is originated in Spain and some say Cuba. Yeah, but mezcal and coffee liqueur, such as Calu or Tia Maria, as yeah. are, uh, yeah, but if you're a legitimate, as Fraser said, you want the Tia Maria. Yeah. For concert and cut. This is the show. We'll see everyone later and go make yourself a carajillo. And we're going to have the recipe on the site in the next few days.